Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlotthauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Friday, September the 6th, 2024. So here's a look at the latest GOES-16 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at TropicalTidbits.com. And as we can see right now across the entire Atlantic, there is some activity going on out there, but nothing in the way of tropical development. We do have an area to watch still out here, but that really isn't going to likely develop due to unfavorable upper level winds. We have another area to watch coming off of Africa. We will not be talking about that in today's video since there is a mixed signal on where this is going to come off of Africa, where it's going to be headed once it comes off of Africa. So there's a lot of uncertainty on that for the time being. But instead, in today's video, we will be focusing on the Gulf of Mexico for our next area of interest, which could become our next tropical depression or storm in the next five to seven days. So here's a closer zoomed in view on Invest 90L this afternoon over the northwestern Gulf of Mexico, courtesy of zoomearth.com. There's a link in the description also below this video leading to this satellite imagery. So what we have going on right now, we have a circulation right here. So that is definitely evident. We may have also a semblance of a weak vorticity maximum underneath this deeper convection to the south of Cameron, Louisiana. All right, so that's what we are seeing. And then we also have drier air coming in out of the northerly direction. You can see the stable nimbostratus form clouds right here. This is not a very good healthy look to the system because we want a lot of moisture to begin with that is able to kind of allow this wave to kind of be dubbed underneath of. But also we have westerly shear cutting across the system too. That's allowing this very asymmetrical look to the cloud appearance that we are seeing right now over the northern Gulf of Mexico and also along New Orleans, uh, Panama City, which actually have been getting quite a bit of rainfall over the last couple of days. Even so, the center is down here. Yes, impacts do spread well away from this area of disturbed weather. So keep that in mind that just because this is not a tropical storm or a depression, that does not mean your impacts go away just like that. Now, when we quickly zoom out here on the GOES Channel 9 water vapor imagery provided again by tropicaltidbits.com, these darker black colors indicate a lot of drier air in the atmosphere. This is in a deep layer. And these brighter, grayer colors, not the cloud cover, but underneath it indicate that there's more moisture here. So this is battling half of drier air to the north and a lot of moisture down to the south. But what's going to end up happening is, is these two waves, one over the Yucatan and the one that's 90L over the northwestern Gulf of Mexico. These two are going to end up merging somewhere down here over the Bay of Campeche. Where does this locate? Does it locate further to the east or will it go a lot closer to the uh, the Mexico coast is to be predetermined because that's going to really um, allow where this is going to go and how long is it going to be over the warm Gulf waters. As you know, under this environment eventually becomes very conducive for strengthening. And if this is far enough off the land areas and it ends up going to the north, this could strengthen theoretically pretty quickly. Now, when we take a look at our latest seven day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida, we have four areas to watch right now out there in the tropics. These two areas right out here in the Atlantic will not do anything, so big X on those. I'm not concerned about that, including the area coming off of Africa, so we won't be talking about that either in today's video. But instead, we're going to be really discussing in much more detail on the modeling, what we're looking at, how much rainfall can you see out of this, and our ensemble spaghetti plots on this disturbance. Because this has a medium chance, a 40% chance, of tropical development in the next seven days. This went from 20% to now up to 40%. We'll see if they continue to really increase those chances in later outlook. So with that being said, we are gonna be walking through all of the deterministic and ensemble models in this video on our tropical disturbance in the western half of the Gulf of Mexico. You all need to be paying very close attention to this system. I'm not here to get uh, to make you guys all scared and what, to get clicks and to get watch time and whatnot, but this has uptrended on our models, especially on the GFS, 
the icon, the Canadian, and the artificial intelligence model on the Euro. Okay, so anyone living in Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and even the western half here of the panhandle of Florida really needs to be watching this system really closely, all right? And as long as this remains an intimate threat to any United States locations, including Mexico, we will be talking about this in every video. We will switch gears from the deep tropics out there in the MDR to now focus more on the Gulf. So this is the 12Z model run from the GFS, and the 18Z run is coming in right now. So we will be providing that in today's video. But you can see as we go into tomorrow morning, so this is Saturday morning, right around, say, 8 o'clock in the morning, or about 7 to 8 o'clock in the morning central time, we can still see here near tropical depression force winds coming off of Texas. This is not a tropical depression, but the wind force is like in such a way like that. And this is going to continue to strengthen. We can see here by tomorrow afternoon winds of 35 miles an hour. Now, when we compare that to our latest model run, we can see this has uptrended a little bit more, just by a little bit, not super significant, winds of about 30 to 40 miles an hour. And as we move this forward, we can see that a surface low does develop down here by Sunday morning. This is September the 8th. And you can see the circulation here. Keep an eye on this. This is where the new circulation develops. So that area of interest, comes all the way down here while our other wave comes out of Belize and out of the Yucatan Peninsula. And so these both combine and we can see, look at that red down there. That is 50 mile an hour winds. That is really strong. But of course, this is our latest model run. So this is only out to 71 hours. All right, so we're not going to be able to show you the entirety of the 18Z model run. If there is time at the end of the video, we'll do that. But here's a look at the 12Z run showing it a little weaker with winds of 48 miles an hour. But on the 18Z run now, it has winds of 60 miles an hour. So a 12 mile an hour wind increase between the last run and even the 06Z run had it at 39 miles an hour. The 0Z run had it at about 37 to 39 miles an hour. So this has made a big uptrend in recent models. And now the surface low is a little further to the east on this run versus prior runs, which means it's further off land. And if this makes a turn to the north, this could, th in theory, organize very quickly. And we saw what systems can do. We saw Harvey. Remember, Harvey was just a tropical depression over over here and yet that monster became a cat four when it impacted um, Texas and stalled out. You don't take your eyes off of systems like this and because the NHC has a 40% on this, we are really going to have to watch this. The icon model is also similar with the GFS 18Z run. Let's put that into motion, except it has even stronger winds. Look at this, 40 mile an hour winds out of the northeast on the northwestern quadrant. Again, not a depression, but it has a lot of wind energy, a lot of vorticity, a lot of spin. And when we go into Sunday, there is a combo. Those two waves meet into one. There's a big merger coming, and that's where our new low forms. And look at it's even a little further to the east than what the GFS shows. And so as this goes further north, you can see it right here. The system does organize a little bit more. This is into Monday afternoon into Tuesday morning. You can see winds there uh, increasing pretty substantially. Look at that. Winds 42 by Tuesday morning, and then by Wednesday morning, winds could reach speeds of 60 to 70 miles an hour. That would be a tropical storm on this run. This would be a very alarming signal on the icon. Even the 12Z run had it weaker. Look at 49 miles an hour, 06Z even a little weaker, and 0Z run even a little weaker, maybe about as strong. But point being here is on the latest run, it has strengthened a little bit more with a central pressure here of now 985 millibars. Last run had it only 995. So this has deepened significantly on recent model runs and we are not gonna take our eyes off of this for the time being. What about the Canadian model, the gym model? Well, let's put that into motion also. This is the 12Z run. The Canadian only renders twice a day, 0Z and 12Z and 0Z again. So we don't get an 18Z run off the Canadian. So we have to just rely on the 12Z instead. 
but showing similar characteristics. Again, by Sunday, there's a combination. These two waves colliding into one, making uh, for a strong tropical storm. This goes north, and then it goes back over Mexico. That's a possibly an outlier scenario. We'll see. There's a lot of in fan a lot of uh, confusion where this is going to go but the icon and the gfs have been really consistent at indicating that something develops over here and hits texas eventually by the middle of next week now when looking at the artificial intelligence forecasting system weatherman plus did talk about this in this morning's video this has been remarkably consistent, all right? It didn't do good with our waves over the main development region, but it's certainly picking up this one really well. And when we go forward, the, we don't have the 18Z artificial intelligence in yet, so we are only going to rely on the 12Z. But look at this also strengthens it into a strong or a high-end tropical depression or a tropical storm with winds of about 40 miles an hour. Look at this goes here. This is going to go possibly make landfall over eastern Louisiana while the Canadian is way over here. So there's a lot of spread in the model guidance, but somewhere rather someone's going to get hit really hard with a depression or storm. Looking at the European model, operational model. So now, when looking at the latest deterministic European model, this is the 12Z output from the Euro, and we can see where our disturbance is over the northwestern Gulf of Mexico. Again, these two are going to collide. They're going to become one. It's a big merger coming over the southern portion of the Gulf of Mexico. And look at what goes on here. It's going to get really ugly once these two combine. The Euro is not showing much in the way of a uh, of a merger going on because this system becomes more dominant up here. But nevertheless, this is uh, probably an outlier. I think it's going to be an outlier because this wind down here is not as strong as what other models picked up. And this is just too far north. So a lot of uncertainty on the Euro at resolving this. But I'll tell you, there's a lot of models picking this up as becoming our next name storm over the a western portion of the Gulf of Mexico. And look at the Euro doesn't do much at all with this over the next four to five days. That is through Tuesday and Wednesday next week. So now that we looked over all of the global deterministic models in the 12Z and 18Z outputs for today over the Gulf, let's take a look at now the rainfall. This is very concerning. This is actually alarming when we look at this. Even if this does not become our name storm, this is going to bring a lot of rainfall over the coast here of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida. Look at the ensemble forecast from the GEFS. We're looking at anywhere between 2 to 4 inches of rainfall down here, maybe as much as 8 inches of rainfall. And look at over here over McAllen in Texas. We can be seeing an isolated area here up to even 10 inches of rainfall because of how much is coming. Remember, the system is down here. All this moisture is going to go northward because of that jet stream that I'm about to show you. A look at the European Ensemble forecast. All 51 members projecting rainfall amounts greater than a foot over Louisiana. So this is going to be absolutely obliterating a flooding over this area also along the Texas coast and also for Florida, we're looking at four to six inches of rainfall. So again, this whole area, folks, we're looking at a moderate risk of flooding potentially in later outlooks from the Weather Prediction Center. So you really need to be paying close attention to this. This is not looking good for a lot of residents in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama along the Gulf Coast. So now that we talked about the wind forecast with all of the models that I showed you in this video so far, and on the ensembles with the rainfall forecast for the southern Gulf Coast of the United States, we're going to be looking at now our spaghetti plots of all 51 members on the Euro that make this possible. So this is from weathernerds.org, and what we have going on over here is a lot of members showing a tropical storm. All these green lines here are winds of 40 knots or, uh, or stronger. That's about 45 miles an hour, and there is still a couple of members here indicating a strong tropical storm, if not even a hurricane. I don't see a hurricane coming, but you never know. We have a one or two members here showing winds of 60 knots. That is 70 miles an hour of wind going towards Texas in about five to 10 days. So this one's gotta be really watched, especially when it gets down here and then it goes north. Again, that northerly turn is coming 
in the next three to five days. Now, when looking at the GEFS model, this is the global ensemble forecasting system from the 12Z output. And again, look at all of the spaghetti members putting this up on the screen over the Western Gulf of Mexico, indicating our next potential of a tropical storm coming. And again, these blue colors, these green colors indicate tropical depression and storm intensity with a couple of members here putting this up to hurricane intensity potentially. Now that we talked about the Gulf of Mexico with our disturbance coming for the Western Gulf of Mexico, including for Texas, I did want to briefly touch upon what might be coming even bigger over the main development region of the Atlantic. We've been keeping an eye on this tropical wave already for the last couple of days. It is still showing on the models that this could become our next tropical storm or if not even a hurricane. There are some members picking that up here in the next 5 to 10 days. So we will have to keep an eye on that if necessary in later outlooks for the second half of my videos. Even the GEFS ensemble is even picking up a similar signal out there in nearly the same time frame. Now, when we take a look at ahead of what might be coming over the Caribbean and over the Gulf of Mexico over the next 15 days, this look at the European ensemble prediction system, um, this look at the control 200 millibar velocity potential anomaly. So these green colors, these blue colors indicate upward motion in the atmosphere. That means lower pressures at the surface, more thunderstorm development, and these redder orange colors indicate more sinking motion. And so the favorability time frame is coming right now soon over the Caribbean and over the Gulf of Mexico from about the 9th of September all the way through the 13th and the 15th of September. We have another favorability, another convective. A more concerning situation could be unfolding on the GEFS ensemble forecast over the next couple of weeks here, 16 days. We have a lot of upward motion in blue here. Again, we talked about that and a lot of sinking motion over the Central Pacific. So now let's take a look at another chart that I wanted to show you all too really quickly. MJ over here with the blue lines indicating a lot of upward motion. That's why we have an area to watch over there in the Eastern Pacific. This is going to transition into the Atlantic. And once this happens, we get the MJO convective coupled Kelvin wave merger going on. We're going to have a lot of upward motion and potentially a huge spike in tropical activity not always the case with every time this goes over but you never know the upward motion here lesser shear lots of moisture in the atmosphere lots of destabilization at 200 millibars and that allows a lot of convection to develop now with that being said i hope this video helped you out a lot folks if it did please consider subscribing if you haven't already hit the like button and share this video with their family and friends on social media as always as long as this area of disturbed weather remains a threat to any land areas in the gulf coast of mexico we will do daily updates on this and we will forget about our tropical wave coming off of africa until it really shows up again on our models. Wait a second, it's popping up again on the 18Z GFS model showing two tropical storms or hurricanes. It does show that, but not as significant as yesterday.